Right guys, welcome now to Tech Tuesday from a slightly uh, different backdrop than, than what you normally see. I'm up here at the amazing Loch Lomond and it is just beautiful up here. <laughs> it really, really is. A little bit chilly, as you might expect, uh, just coming out of February in the middle of Scotland, but what, oh, just, yeah. So stay tuned for the vlogs, which are gonna be coming from here. It is just such a special, special place. I love Scotland. I absolutely love it. So what I've done this week for Tech Tuesday, gone back to a little bit of the older format, so just asked, hello Mr. Pheasant, uh, just ask for questions for you guys. The first question here on Instagram from Campbell Jones underscore, what club so far have you been disappointed with uh, performance considering a large price range? So cost to performance ratio. I've got to be honest, at this moment in time, if you go to the top end manufacturers, so we're talking PXG, which was mentioned in the comment, um, Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway, whatever it may be, you're not generally going to be able to find a bad club. That's because most of the drivers especially have really pushed up to the legal limit. So you're looking at the Callaway Epic, you're looking at the M1, I think they're the two leaders in the driving category at the moment and the quality of those clubs is absolutely fantastic. There's not really much to split them at all. I think the Epic for the first time has actually overtaken TaylorMade as far as drivers purchased in the US. I, I might be mistaken on that, but that's a little bit of a news article I read. So what will you would say about that is, oh, well, the Epic is obviously a better driver. It's really not the case. The Epic and the M1, very, very similar. It's just the marketing around it and the buzz that they've managed to create around that driver. It's just greater and they've managed to shift more. As far as PXG is concerned, my view on that has not changed and it's been consistent ever since they came out. It's a really good club. I've tried their clubs, I've used their clubs, and I really, really like them. But they're not any better than a top-range Mizuno iron, for example, or a Callaway driver, for example. They're no better than those. It's just that status symbol. Now, if you're after a status symbol, then great, get yourself some PXGs. But if not, you can find just as good a club for a decent price, uh, well, decent price, I mean, you know, a large price, from the other manufacturers as well. And I can't really think of any particular club I've been disappointed with. I suppose maybe the only slight disappointment would be is how the manufacturers are going about marketing their irons now. So saying it's gonna be the furthest ever, just simply by cranking down the loft, getting it launching higher without much spin, and because of the less loft, it's going a lot, lot further. So. It's almost manipulating lofts and really dressing up a seven iron as a five iron. So I think that's maybe the only slight disappointment, but even then it's just about getting the gapping right. And let's face it, most people aren't gonna be complaining about hitting it further or higher. You know, that's not a complaint that I really get. <laughs> Question here from Jay O'Reilly. Is the TaylorMade TP5 as good as they seem to think? Now I mentioned this before, 2017 is very much going to be the battle of the ball. So all the big manufacturers, you're thinking the new Pro V's coming out from Titleist, you've got the TP5 from TaylorMade as well. And then you've got loads of other up and coming ball manufacturers. You know, you've obviously got your Costco with the Kirkland Signature, which I believe will be put back into production. And if not, it's the Nassau Quattro, which is pretty much an identical ball. You've got the Snell balls, you've got the Vice balls, you know, this undercurrent of small manufacturers producing great balls and then you've got Shrix and you've got Callaway. Everyone is going after this ball market and that's because people have shown, such as TaylorMade, such as Callaway, that they can bring balls out which perform up to the level of the Pro V1. I mean the Pro V1 has been the benchmark, there's no doubt about it, for such a long time but what other manufacturers are doing now is they're managing to push their products up to a similar level and people are now turning around and saying well if I can get a dozen of these Taylor made for example for about 30 pounds not exactly sure what they're retailing at maybe 35 or then i have to get these pro v's for another 10 pounds 45 what extra advantage am i getting for the pro v one thing that the pro v does have over the other ball manufacturers it has a lot of brand loyalty so if you're used to playing a pro v1 you know what you're going to get and you know that you're comfortable using that ball because it's been such a high quality product for a long period of time and that can't be overstated it is still the number one selling golf ball 
But the TP5 in particular, they are very, very good balls. If you've not had a chance to try them, I recommend you do. But I recommend you try all these balls. Use the TP5, get the Pro V, try the new one. Use the Shrixons, use the Bridgestones if you can get hold of them. Have a go with the Callaways and have a go with these lesser known manufacturers as well. There is so much quality gear coming out. It may be a little bit hard to get hold of some of this and it would be expensive if you bought a dozen of all these different balls. But if you can, try them. So I've got a couple of questions here which I can almost roll into one. So DC Walker underscore DC underscore Walker 93. Do you practice pre-round? If so, how important is it? And thanks for the videos. Thank you very much, DC Walker underscore 93. And then from Luke underscore Palmo, what is the next competition you are looking to play in? So I've got a number of competitions, first of all, coming up in March, and I think quite a lot of them are pro-am. So I may be putting a little bit of a call out there for people to play with me if they're in the local area. I have a couple of regular partners uh, Mike Turner for example who plays with me quite a bit who I'll ask as well so stay tuned for those I may be asking for partners I can't wait to get playing again oh god I can't wait to get playing again as far as practice pre-round this is something I do get asked a lot and I just want to rephrase it slightly you shouldn't be practicing pre-round if your time uh, has not been spent during that week let's say it's a competition round I know this is not possible for a lot of people but if you're playing a competition at the weekend you should be doing your practice during that week and not confining it before you just go play because you don't want to be going out onto the course thinking about loads of different swing changes you want to be going out to the course and playing now that involves getting warmed up by doing stretches by doing physical exercises and then you're better suited in many respects to swinging something like a weighted club or doing something to get the muscles and the body loosened up but if you have a small amount of time spending it around the pitching the chipping and the putting green really honing in the short side of your game before you go out to play. I often find for many people that is the best way to go but it's not exclusively true. People can spend an hour on the range before they go play and that's the best way for them to prepare but what I would always suggest is to try and experiment with different things. What works for you might not work for another person. You might be someone who prepares for their round perfectly by getting in the clubhouse, having a coffee and a sausage sandwich and that relaxes you enough to go out and have a great game. It's not something you maybe see you know, Rory do, but some people do it. Right, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. We're about to go out and play in about half an hour or so. No, about an hour or so. So I need to go get this edited and uploaded and then get a bit of pre-round preparation and like I've uh, just discussed a bit of stretching. That's my stretching. This place is magnificent. It is beautiful. I'm so lucky to be here, absolutely. Uh, there's gonna be another video coming up tomorrow. I, there's one I want to do, but I just need to make sure, but you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for it. If not, it'll be the normal quest for the open vlog on Thursday. So guys, thanks for watching, subscribe, follow me if I've already said this, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye.